four. Hi. Um, I'm. I live in Melbourne, so at the moment I'm. I'm here in Melbourne. Um, I. I went to school here in Melbourne to primary school, and um, I did lots of sports when I was little. Um, I played basketball. I swam. I did running. Um, a whole lot of sports. I just loved sport. I loved being outside. Um, but then I started skiing also when I was three years old up at Mount Buller, um, which is about three hours from Melbourne. So. I'm sure you don't have any snow up there, but down here in Melbourne there are some mountains close by so we can go skiing. Um, my dad taught me how to ski and um, I just absolutely loved it. It was it was so much fun, you know, being up in the mountains, being outside, competing, um, that I started, I joined the local race club um, and I started training and um, the Olympics was my major goal when I was, you know, your age really. Um, I always wanted to go to the Olympics and represent Australia. So um, four years ago, or three and a half years ago, I, I qualified for my first Olympic Games in Vancouver, um, and I competed in ski cross, which is which was a brand new event. Um, it's I'm not sure if you've studied the sport, but it's where four of us race against each other at the same time. So it's um it's a little bit dangerous, but it's a lot of fun, um, and it's it's yeah something that I love to do. Um, I'm now training. Um, here in Australia for the next Olympics, um, but we travel a lot. So next week I will fly to New Zealand where I'll train in, in the mountains in New Zealand. And then um, I'm there for about five weeks and then I come home and then I go to Europe and we train in Austria for two weeks. And then I come home again and then I go over in November. So I spend a lot of time overseas, um, not much time in Australia, but um, yeah, I hope to qualify for the next Olympics, which are in Sochi in Russia, and um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Thank you very much. My name's Laura. I'm the teacher from this class. We've actually got uh, four students from my class, and we have one student from one of the other classes, and they're all in the senior school. So the youngest is 12 and the oldest is 16. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been talking about you um, with the students. So remember how we talked about this skiing, this lady skiing yep. on this picture? Well, this is the lady that's in that picture. How cool is that? Would you like to ask a question? Um, Lakara, would you like to go first? So she uses her iPad to communicate, and um, yep. it might not be loud enough for you to hear, so I might have to move the microphone closer. Which one sure. do you want to ask? Take this one first. Mm. Okay, favorite sports, basketball, well, the question? Question, sorry. My favourite sport is so basketball. Do you like basketball? So get and drop My favourite sport is basketball. Hang on a second, it's it's coming slowly. Do you like basketball? So get and drop Did you get that? What was it? Do I like basketball and... Do you like basketball, soccer and bowling? Soccer and bowling. Do I like those sports? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do like bowling. Um, I, I like going bowling with friends. Um, basketball I used to play when I was young um, and I loved basketball. It was a lot of fun. I love being in a team sport, a team sport. and soccer. I haven't yeah, played much haven't soccer, played but, much soccer um, but it's fun. Um, it's I do fun like soccer, I do playing like with friends as well. So I do like all three of those sports. Excellent. Lakara loves basketball. Do we need to go to the others? What's happening? Hi there. I'm just going to jump back in. Jump back in. And welcome our students from the 
Um, I'm sorry we had a slight delay, but we started the chat for a couple of minutes on the middle part of the and I'd like to welcome you uh, to chat with our Olympian Katia Kaka and also Judas Education Field Primary. So we're just about to go to the last minute. And uh, we might move to Middle Park to ask the first question, then we'll go back to our case here. All right, have a good chat. It's going to go to the other class. Hey, Middle Park, how's it going? Good, thank you. Good. 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 Today we have a couple of questions to ask you. So first up, we have Ben Ashkenazi representing 56A. Uh, hey, Ben. Uh, how Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> um, how, how do you juggle your studies and ski training? What strategies do you have? Good question. Um, I've been juggling my studies and my ski training pretty much ever since I started race club when I was about 12. So um, when I was still at high school, I used to study up at Mount Hula and do my schooling by correspondence. So basically I'd ski in the morning, um, for four hours, have lunch, and then I would do my studies in the afternoon. Um, now, um, to juggle study and skiing, because I'm currently at university, um, and I finished my undergraduate degree in architecture, and now I'm doing my master's in property, and basically it's about being extremely um, good at time management. Um, you have to know exactly um, basically what work you need to do, how much time you've got to do it, and then when you allocate yourself time, you really have to be disciplined and make sure that that's when you get your study done. I remember when I was in Year 12 and I had so much schoolwork and I was training so much at the same time, I, was, I basically would write down my daily plan and say between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock I would study this subject, subject 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock I'd go to training, um, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, um, I do a bit more study. So yeah, it's all about being um, really good at time management and, and very disciplined and also communicating with your teachers about how you're going and how the workload's going. Uh, so, sorry, I've, I've got one more. Oh wait, sorry. Do I go? Okay. Uh, I might get one from the other school and then we'll come back to you guys. I think we'll alternate. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarita. Hang on, I don't know that it's going to be loud enough. Press it and mm. see. Yeah, is it up as loud as it? So this is Sarita over here. Can you see her? Yeah, I can't Probably. see. I, can, I can't see her. She's not there in the screen. Go. Oh, there we go. Hi, Sarita. She uses her iPad as well, so we'll see if it's loud enough. If it's not, I'll bring it closer. Go ahead. Great. You hear that? No. I'm going to bring it closer. All right, Ray. Do you have pets? No, I didn't get that. Sorry. Get that. Sorry. Oh, do I have pets? Um, I do have a pet. I've got two dogs, and my sister has a cat, so I guess we have a cat as well. So we have two Labradoodles, um, Maya and Diesel, and. I love taking them for walks and for um, when I'm at home and I take them to the park. And the cat, I don't take for walks, but the cat just kind of, uh, you know, walks around the house and uh, plays with the dogs as well. So we have three pets. There you go, Sarita. She has two dogs and a cat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you say? Say thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Back yeah. to Middle Park. Um, yeah. Next we have... From five six B. Hi. Um. What are your relationships with your competitors and your coach? Um. My coach has actually been my coach for about eight years now. So we're very close. We know each other pretty much inside out, and I think that's really important because we spend so much time together. It's important to have a really close relationship with your coach. Um. And with the other competitors, it's actually. It's really good when we're off the snow um, and not actually competing. Everyone's really good friends. Um, I've got good, really good friends from the Canadian team, the Swiss team, the German team. Um, but I guess then once you're competing and once you're in the start gate, it gets a bit more serious and 
everyone's kind of focused on on their race. So it's um, yeah, there's great camaraderie. Everyone's um, happy to be competing and spending time together overseas. And then when you start competing, it's um, yeah, focused. <laughs> Yeah, that. Uh, I'll go to the. I'll, I might go to the next school. We'll just do one each. This is Isaac. Hi. Hi, Isaac. Yeah. Do you want to ask? Yeah. What other sports do you like? Yeah. Okay, you say it. So mm -hmm. What other sports do you like? What? Oh. What other sports? What other sport you like? What other sports do I like? Um, yeah. I like a lot of sports. I like, I really like cycling, um, and I like mountain bike riding, um, and I like running. These are all really good sports um, that help me train for my skiing to make me really fit and strong. Um, what else? I I play um, tennis. I used to play tennis right up until grade twelve. Um, I swim. Um, I like uh, ice hockey as well sometimes. Um, yeah, a, a whole lot of sports. I'm definitely a very sporty person, so I like a, a whole range of sports. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Little park. Your turn to go. Start presenting for. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with pressure, stress, nerves prior to racing? Um, I think dealing with pressure and nerves, it's something that you kind of, you, you it's something that you, I guess, develop as you um, mature as an athlete. So when I was young, I remember I used to get really nervous for races, even if it was the smallest thing, like I would be up the night before tossing and turning in bed and I you know couldn't sleep and I guess now um, I'm I'm a lot I can control my emotions a lot more and I'm used to it. Even I remember the night before the Olympics, the last Olympics it was, it was probably, you know, the biggest event in my life. I was I could I was actually quite calm and um, you know, just ready for the race and I wasn't, you know, a nervous wreck. So um, we do a little bit of work with sports psychologists to help us kind of control those emotions. Um, but when I'm actually in the start gate, ready to go, it's it's things like um, visualization, breathing, trusting that all the preparation that you've done leading up to the event is you know has been to your best, absolute best ability, so that you know right, I, I've done the preparation. There's nothing more that I can do. All I have to do now is compete. So um, I guess yeah, it's 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 all of those put together. Okay, tell her what your name is, say hi. Hi, what's your name? Hi. My name's Katia, what's your name? My name's Devona. Devona, nice to meet you. What's your favourite music? My favourite music, oh, I like a whole range of music. Um, but Do you like my favourite... Do, yeah. Do you, do you like Jessica Malboy? I do like Jessica Malboy. <laughs> Me too. She's a, good She's a good Australian singer. Um, I like. Who else do I like that's Australian? Um, oh. I like a, a whole a whole lot of bands. Um, oh, I don't know. Um, um, I like Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah, Beyonce is good too. Do you, so, do you like that movie that they were both in? Oh no, not the the movie that Jessica Malboy was in. Did you see the movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I I'd like to. Yeah. Thank you very much. I listen to a lot of music actually when I'm skiing. It's good. It's a good way to get me motivated and. Um, relax as well at the same time. So I, I ski sometimes with a little iPod. So both Lakara, so Lakara's here. Smile, Lakara. 
and Devona both like the same music. So Jessica Malvoy, Beyonce, yes. they like Nicki Minaj. So it's very interesting to see what um, you like to listen to. Isn't it, Devona? Mm. What do you say? Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Middle part? Next, next last Sorry, can you ask the question again? It was cutting out. What kept you motivated after your injury? Ah, um, I think really it was the goal of getting to the Olympics that kept me motivated. I, I hurt my knee about a year and a half before the Olympics and basically that was the only thing, you know, my, my major goal that made me do all the rehab and all the training to come back. So um, I guess with the timing it was kind of good in that I had such a massive goal that I basically did everything I could and I was 100% committed to getting back from my injury. Um, and also, like, when I was injured, it was it was strange I, because I'd never been injured before. You don't realise kind of the things you take for granted, like going for a run. I couldn't do that. I couldn't go for a swim. So I guess just getting back to full fitness and where I was um, was also a massive motivator. Cool. Thanks. Keep coming forward. We're going to move her forward this time. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's see if we can get it. Okay, go for it, Lakara. Look at what you're doing. Do you like swimming? Do I like swimming? Yeah, I do really yeah, I like do swimming. Really um, um, I, I, I do swimming as cross training, as cross -training. Um, um, you know, sport. You know, so I, so I, I swim laps in the pool. But the, the best thing about swimming, about swimming I think, is swimming in the ocean. Um, I like swimming in the waves. It's, it's refreshing and it's nice being outside and in nature. Is that all you wanted to know? Is that good? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, how do you cope with disappointment? Have I what? How do you cope with disappointment? Oh, oh, that's a tough one. Um, oh, I've been really disappointed before. Um, I think. Leading up to the Olympic Games um, three years ago, I, I had done so much training and I'd just come back from my injury that um, all I wanted to do was qualify for the Olympics. And there were some races where I didn't get the results that I needed. And I'm sure you've had the same with some of your skiing races. You don't do quite as well as you you wish you did, and it's just it's like. We put so much pressure on ourselves, and it's like heartbreaking. But really, you got to think about the big picture. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you don't get the best result. It's not like you're dying. It's it's you know you came third instead of winnings, or you know you crashed and you didn't finish instead of doing getting on the podium. So really, you've got to put it in perspective. Um, and what I do is just kind of try and well take out the positives from the race and see what I can learn. Um, see why I made the mistake and where I went wrong and then try and improve on that for the next race. And then I just put it aside. Um, I don't say, you know, I should have done this, I could have done this. I just put it aside and focus on the next one. And then generally, usually um, I'll get a better result in the next one because of everything I've learnt from the last one. Okay, so Rita's got a question for you now. That's it. Do you like hot or cold weather? Say it again. Do you like hot or cold weather? What was that? Sorry. Do you like hot or cold weather? Do you like hot or cold weather? Ah, oh. <laughs> um, I I actually love hot weather. <laughs> believe it or not, seeing as it's hard to believe, given that I'm a ski racer and I spend nine months of the year in the snow and in winter, but I love hot weather and summer holidays and going to the beach and wearing bathers. Um, 
So, but I also do love being in the snow. I guess it depends on what you're prepared for. But um, I, I do love hot weather, and I think that if I could do my whole life again, I probably would have done a summer sport um, just because you get to spend the whole time in, <laughs> in the sun instead of in freezing temperatures. How hot is it up there at the moment? Uh, it's about 30. 30. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But it's Warmer still very Melbourne. cold in the morning. It's still very cold in the mornings, like five degrees in the morning sometimes. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Uh, middle Park? Um, now we have Oscar McVean from 56E. Um, what was your time like at Middle Park Primary School and how has it influenced you as a person? I loved Middle Park. Um, I live uh, well, I live in Richardson Street, so just well, a few hundred metres down the road. Um, so I used to walk to school um, or ride my bike, and my brother went to Middle Park, and so did my sister. Um, Angela taught me PE, um, and I loved it. I went there until grade four, and then I switched over to Wesley College um, in Paran. Um, yeah, Middle Park was great. I, I think Middle Park was probably where I kind of found my love for sports. I used to play, you know, I used to love um, Athletics Day and I used to be so involved in house sport. I was so competitive I wanted to kind of win everything. And um, No, I loved it and I guess just, you know, having a really good group of friends that also were into sport, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I loved Middle Park. It was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I loved Middle Park. It was great. Thank you. Cool. We're actually um, out of time, so we've actually got to sign off. Out of time, so we've actually got to sign off. In middle class. We just say goodbye to you. We just say goodbye to you. No, sure. from Acacia Hill. No, from Acacia Hill. Oh, from Acacia Hill. Okay. Oh, from Acacia Hill. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, nice so speaking to you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Back to Middle Park. Cool. Um, now we have Charlotte Bond. Um, do you find it difficult to maintain relationships with your friends, family, and families? Um, and when you when you, when you live such a busy life, is it hard or do you find it fine or...? Yeah, it's, it yeah, actually it, is it quite actually hard. Is quite um, hard. Um, when I, when I, I spend, I spend probably, probably nine months of the year overseas and away from home, so I guess it's a really it's long, a really time. long time. And, um, and um, to stay close to with stay friends close and family, and it's family definitely is harder than if I was in Melbourne the whole time. So, so I'm really I'm conscious. Um, I mean, I'm really I mean, close with my family, so I really try and keep a close relationship with them. So, you know, we'll try and get on Skype a couple of times a week so we can kind of have a chat and see each other and communicate. And same with my friends. Like, Skype is a really, really useful tool. I don't know what people would have done before that. Um, I guess phone calls. But, you know, it's um, so, I guess, you know, I go four months without seeing my parents sometimes. So it's a long time, but it's something that we've, I've kind of built up since I was 12. Um I started going overseas when I was 12, and I think my first trip was about three weeks, and then it built up to about six weeks, two months. Now, yeah, I'd go four months without seeing them. So I definitely get homesick still, even though I'm 24, but um, not as much as I used to. And I guess when I'm at home, I really make the most of seeing all of my friends and family. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> have saffron. Um, how did you feel walking out into the Olympics? Um, I think the opening, think the opening ceremony, ceremony was probably one of the best moments of my life. 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 Um, 
uh, it was it was the most amazing yeah. feeling ever. Yeah, I was with all of my all of my um, we were so excited. We were so it's something I've been dreaming about been since dreaming I was probably your age. Probably your age. And um, when we walked and, out into the stadium, there were seventy thousand people there. It was um, it was really an amazing, it was an amazing, really an amazing, amazing, amazing experience. And I remember thinking like, like, like oh, don't trip, oh, don't trip, don't trip. Don't trip. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many cameras <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. I did the worst thing I could. Worst thing I could. Um, but, um, yeah, really, yeah, I was. Really Proud to be representing to be Australia, Australia and, and to have done all the training and training they competed. So it was an amazing moment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we have Bella Stutt from 56A. See? <laughs> How did you know you were ready to compete in the Olympics? Um, well, I really had the results that proved that I was in that top group in the world. So when I went to the Olympics, I was ranked about 28th in the world, and they took the top 35. So I knew that I had the results, and I was, I had the ability. Um, I mean, I guess it was just a matter of performing well on the day at the Olympics and, and, and putting down one of my best runs and trying to be as fast as possible and putting all the, um, you know, cameras and the hype and everything aside and all the nerves and just doing what I've been training for since I was basically 12 years old. Is it because... So, um, should I say something? Do we want to turn it off? Yeah, yeah. Do to try the Is there a bit of a delay? No, no, it's be on their oh, server. Yeah, server. Their server's going down because we're playing it through the speakers. Oh. Sorry. We're just having some. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> she can still hear us. Oh, can she? Yep. I think she can. <laughs> what did you say? Mm -hmm. Say hello. Can hello? you guys hear me? Yeah. Turn the sound We can't hear her, but she can hear us. Can she? Um, no. Lizzie, we just played her. It sounds on. I don't know. Can you hear us? Nod. Nod if you can hear us. Wait, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can hear you. Yeah, we got. Can so you wait. hear me? Okay. No. Now we are. Yeah, okay. now we can. Now we have Bella Stutt from 5 Yeah, oh, good. 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 So, how did you know you were ready for the Olympics? Okay, um, so basically, I, I had the, the I was ranked in the top 35 in the world, so I'd qualified my position, and um, and basically it came down to, you know, I've been training for this sport since I was 12 years old. Um, so had everyone else that were competing at the Olympics. I've been competing against those girls in the World Cup, um, for the past three years. I knew I was. You know, the Olympics, although it's a huge race, basically it's you're racing against the exact same competitors as, as you do on World Cup. So um, I knew that I was ready and basically it was about, um, you know, giving the best performance on the day and putting all my training into practice and making sure that I was, you know, mentally ready for, for the biggest race of probably my lifetime, really. Thanks. Lastly, we have um, Max Ashkenazi from 56D. Hi. What hey, is Max. Your... Oh, hi, Cardio. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what is your daily diet in leading up to competition? Um, so I see a dietitian here at the VIS, um, at the Victorian Institute of Sport, and basically we talk about... Um, when I should eat certain foods and how you know what type of foods I should eat because I guess it's really important when I'm on snow for six five or six hours a day competing it's really important to make sure that you keep getting the right foods in so um, I always have a big breakfast in the morning that's really important um, before I do before I go skiing and then when I'm out on the snow I take um, you know he healthy muesli bars or um, protein bars or something that'll just keep replacing my energy um, sometimes we actually can't have a big lunch because we'll be racing at the time, so we have little kind of top ups, I guess. Um, and then generally, we like I like I really like to cook, so I'll, I'll cook myself a really healthy dinner. So you know, lots of vegetables, um, some chicken or some healthy meat, um, 
I, I definitely have a soft spot for chocolate, um, so I do eat a little bit of chocolate. Um, but I, you know, we do so much training that um, it's it's okay to eat a little bit of um, sweet food. I'd I'd never eat um, McDonald's. I haven't eaten McDonald's in about ten years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some other indulgences like chocolate and a little bit of ice cream too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Keep You're welcome. Um, on behalf of Middle Park Primary, we would like to thank you for this. Um, we've really enjoyed it. Thanks for teaching us about the Olympic experience and we look forward to doing it again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for chatting to me. It was fun.